Good morning. morning. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. This is a fundamental session, meaning that uh, my goal is to provide you with foundational information about the car business and technology, and uh, specifically how dealers are leveraging marketing technology to engage today's shoppers. And as you can see by my lab coat, I am a scientist. Now, by definition, a scientist in the broad sense is one engaging in a systematic activity to acquire knowledge. In a more restricted sense, a scientist refers to an individual who uses the scientific method. A person may be an expert in one or more areas. The scientific method is an ongoing process of observations, formulating hypotheses, developing theories, and in my case, developing solutions that help car dealers convert more leads, increase showroom traffic, and sell more cars. I'd like to give, a, give you a little context here, who I am and what my background is. My name is David Farmer. I'm the founder and CEO of Entice. I have over 25 years experience in automotive, direct automotive retail experience for 15 years, and about 10 years in uh, automotive marketing and technology. In addition to my automotive experience, I have been fascinated with technology my entire life. And because of this fascination, I recently read the book, The Innovators, how a group of inventors, hackers, geniuses, and geeks created the digital revolution by Walter Isaacson, who is also the author of the Steve Jobs biography. And if you're a technology geek like me, I highly recommend reading both of these books. The reason I bring this up is that it reminded me how lucky I have been to grow up in the times that I have. I've seen the creation of the personal computer, the creation and the evolution of the internet, and now the mobile revolution has all happened in my lifetime. I'll age myself a little bit with the next statements, but I'm okay with that. In 1977, I was a second grader in a small town in Minnesota playing Oregon Trail on a brand new Apple II that had just been released by a small company from Cupertino, California. Arguably the first successful personal computer. In the early 1980s, I saw the creation of Windows and the Mac. And here's a red letter date in the history of technology. October 21st, 1985, Dr. Emmett Brown successfully tested the flux capacitor, which is what makes time travel possible. In 1990, Tim Berners-Lee created the World Wide Web, the beginning of the internet as we know it, and I was working as an auto detailer in a dealership that my father was running. 1993, 1994, the first web browser was created and email was invented, and I purchased the latest PowerBook, which still sits on my desk today. And that year is the uh, the same year that I opened up an independent used car dealership just over the bridge in Pinellas Park, Florida. By the late 1990s, I saw the creation of Google, pay-per-click advertising and banner advertising, the founding of companies like Dealer.com and Autotrader. And by this time, I had been working in a toy dealership and created the first desking technology solution of its type and named it ePencil. So this is the first time that uh, I've had the opportunity to speak at a convention like this. And as I started to think about what I really wanted to say, first, I wanted to share something that would provide real value and be based on my own personal experience with technology and the car business. What I discovered in looking back is that what I focused on in my automotive career has always been conversion. When I was detailing cars, it was converting a dirty car into a clean car. When I was selling cars, it was converting showroom traffic to sales. When I created and ran a BDC in that Toyota store in the late 1990s, it was converting sales calls and what little internet leads we had then into appointments. And when I was running a dealership, everything was about conversion, converting new hires into salespeople, converting inventory into gross profit, converting advertising into showroom traffic, and converting showroom traffic into happy customers. And now with digital marketing, it's all about conversion. Converting impressions into clicks, clicks into page views, page views into leads, leads into appointments, appointments into visits, visits into sales. 
The bottom line is that I know that the reason everyone is here, a digital dealer, is to figure out new and effective ways to leverage digital to help you sell and uh, sell more cars, service more cars, and make more money. So let's get started. The title of my session is How ZMOT Got It Wrong. I believe that ZMOT, the, the ZMOT study is a very good illustration showing that shoppers today are engaging with digital in new and different ways during their path to purchase and ownership experience. ZMOT makes the assumption that there are separate moments along the path to purchase. The first moment, the second moment, and what they call the zero moment. Let me first explain by giving you an overview of the ZMOT study. Four years ago, Google introduced us to the zero moment of truth, or ZMOT, as they called it. Many people in this room may be familiar with this term because many automotive digital marketers have used it as part of their spiel on how they would help you, the dealer, win at the zero moment of truth. But you may not be familiar exactly what the zero moment is and how Google got it wrong. In, 19, or I'm sorry, in 2005, the Wall Street Journal published a story that changed the face of marketing. The story was about how Procter & Gamble coined the phrase, the first moment of truth, and identified that as the first seven, se first seven seconds after a shopper first encounters a store shelf full of products and is deciding what to buy. The zero moment of truth is a new way of thinking about tr the traditional marketing model. In marketing, traditionally, we have focused on three key areas. The stimulus, defined as TV, radio, and print. Mass media platforms that have allowed marketers to communicate brand awareness and calls to action to potential customers. The first moment of truth, that vital moment in which a customer makes the purchase decision. And finally, the second moment of truth, the ownership experience. People drive home their new car and, experiencing, uh, and experience owning it. They could have a good experience or they could have a bad experience and they share it. In 2011, Google and Shopper Sciences conducted a study of over 5,000 shoppers with the goal to show where uh, influence takes place from going from undecided to decided. The study goes on to explain that between the stimulus and the first moment, a new step has appeared, the zero moment of truth. The zero moment is when, a customers, when customers do their research, get smart about alternatives, read reviews, look for coupons, and comparison shop all before going to the shelf. So according to the ZMOT study, there's the stimulus, TV, radio, and print, then there's the zero moment where customers engage digitally. And then the first moment when they make the purchase. And then the second moment of truth, the ownership experience. So let's break this down and look at the stimulus. The stimulus is described as traditional media, TV, radio, print. In the questionnaire that Google used to compile the data, for the Zero Moment of Truth study, only three out of the 18 answers that a shopper could select as an answer referred to online activities. Only three out of 18. So the study was really flawed from the start, skewing everything from a stimulus perspective to legacy media, not online activities. If you break it down further and look at TV, an $80 billion industry. Let me ask everybody in this room a question. How many people watch TV on your time? Not when the, the TV show airs, but on Netflix, HBO Go. Right? Everybody. Now, how many people in the last year, if you didn't watch TV that way, every time a commercial came on, you fast forwarded through the commercials? Right? And if you didn't do that, you have your face in Facebook, right? Or on Twitter, I know that's what I do. So let's think about you being your customer and ask yourself, does TV work on you? Or do you fast forward through the commercials? 
Now you might think to yourself that TV, that TV still works, but I can promise you one thing, soon it won't. And the reason it won't is because there is about to be another digital revolution in TV. Apple, who has disrupted the phone industry, the music industry, the movie industry, among others, will soon be entering TV in a big way. Now I know that a lot of you might be thinking, well, Apple's already in TV. Now they've been playing around with it for a hobby, as they've called it, for the past few years, but they are really about to get serious about it. And you're going to be hearing more about that this year. Um, now look at HBO, for example. Now there, there's one company that's paying attention. Right now is the first time that you can get HBO without having to buy it from a cable company. $14 a month, HBO Now. You can get it on your phone, your computer, your laptop, or an Apple TV. And soon, soon more is going to be uh, coming. Now what this means is that it's going to be quality content on your time, no commercials. Let's get back to the stimulus and look at radio. With Pandora, iTunes, Spotify, Beats, Tidal, many, many more. You can get your music, your time, anywhere you want. And if you're like me, you're willing to spend five bucks a month to get a subscription, no ads. Lastly, let's look at print. Now, I don't think I need to say anything about newspaper. Newspaper is virtually dead, and I would imagine most people that's here at Digital Dealer would probably agree with me. Now, let me ask you this. How many people, when you get home and you grab your mail out of your mailbox, are excited to see a direct mail offer? Or do you take that and drop it right into the trash? Right? So, again, show of hands, how many people think that direct mail, print, is something that's going to work on your customers if it's not working on you. Now you may be still be doing uh, direct mail and you still think that it's working for you, but from a, let, let's look at it from a sales attribution standpoint. Let's say I'm a dealership and I'm selling 200 uh, vehicles a month and I do a big direct mail sale, right? And at the end of the month, I look at the sales manifest or the, the, uh, I look at all my sales and I look at the mail manifest and I try to do a matchup, right? And let's say I find 50 customers, right? Now, you could look at that and think that the direct mail is working or you could look at that and say, you know, it's probably just luck. That would be what I would consider it. Law of big numbers, you've got 20,000 people in your market area sending out direct mail. Stimulus today is not taking place on traditional media. The zero moment of truth isn't a moment at all. It is the foundation for the entire path to purchase and ownership experience. Google recently received, uh, released a new study. Excuse me, sorry. Google recently received, uh, released a new study called Omni Channel Shoppers, an emerging retail reality. In this study, they look at how digital continues to touch every step of the customer's journey and how retailers oper that who operate both an e-commerce sites and in-store channels need to look at uh, these new Omni Channel Shoppers. I think that we all agree in the car business that the importance of online presence is paramount to success, even though most of the transactions are actually taking place offline at the dealership. Now this fact doesn't mean that we don't have to pay attention to the omni-channel sh shopper, but it really underlines the fact that the dealership's marketing model needs to adapt to the way that, that customers are shopping today. During the study, Google identified three new realities of the omni-channel shopper. Number one, Digital drives in-store traffic. As it turns out, digital doesn't drive clicks and website traffic only, but it drives in-store traffic. Based on this study, Google found that 50% of customers will visit a store within 24 hours of a local search on their smartphone. Number two, smartphones are in-store shopping assistants. Thanks to our always connected world, we have been accustomed to instantaneous answers and a wealth of information at our, fingerprints, or at our fingertips. 
And we are using our smartphones in dealerships as personal shopping assistants, looking for inventory, looking for incentives, looking for trade valuation uh, uh, information and more. One in three shoppers actually prefer to use a smartphone during the sales process to get information rather than asking a salesperson. Number three, omni-channel shopping calls for omni-channel measurement. Although shopping habits have changed drastically in the past few years, the way that we measure success hasn't. Most dealerships are still looking at last click attribution, meaning that you're giving full credit to the sale, to the last action taken place by the customer, but we're going to come back to this in just a moment. I think that the omni-channel study illustrates how customers are engaging with digital. Not only at the zero moment, but through the entire journey to purchase. Digital has become how we are made aware of new products. It is where brand awareness is taking place. And it is guiding us to take actions towards the purchase. Digital is also there during the purchase experience. We are using digital as a part of the decision making process and it is how we are moving from undecided to decided. Not only in the zero moment, but across all moments. For 2014, NADA shows that the average dealership spends $608 per new unit sold in advertising. So let's take a look at how this breaks down in an average dealership spend. 14.9% still goes to newspaper. 15.8 to radio, 23.1 to TV, and direct uh, uh, 10.7 for direct mail, and 26.3 is internet. In 2001, internet advertising accounted for only 4.6 percent. Newspaper, 53 percent. In 2011, internet advertising jumped up to 24.8 percent. Newspaper dropped to 20. TV has, uh, has steadily increased. From 2014% uh, in 2001, 19% in 2006, and 23% today. Radio has stayed about the same. Direct mail has stayed about the same. So the major shifts have been more TV, less print, more internet. We all know that digital is taking over the mind share of the world. Dealer advertising has not yet shifted to this new reality, but it will. The average dealer today is still spending 65% of its total advertising budget on legacy media. I would challenge you to look at your advertising budget and segment it this way. And then ask yourself, if you were your customer, would your dealership's advertising work on you? Do you watch TV commercials? Do you listen to the radio? Do you open your direct mail offers? Now let's take some time to look at the internet part of your advertising budget. According to NAD, it's about 26%. According to other studies, I've seen it at 40%. I've even seen some where they say that there's more spend in digital than there is in legacy media. <clears throat> I think everybody in this room would agree that whatever that number is, it's on the rise and that industry experts continue to give valid reasons why you should invest more money in digital. Let's look at how the average dealer is spending that digital budget. The average digital spend, according to Datium study, rethinking online media attribution is broken down this way. 55% to search engine marketing, 25% to automotive marketplaces, and 20% for everything else. What's interesting here is if you look at where the dealership has allocated their dig digital budget over the last 10 years, it's been about the same. Over 50% to pay-per-click advertising or to Google, 25% to autotrader or cars.com, and then 20% on everything else. Here's another really interesting fact according to this same study. Less than 1% of traffic generated from pay-per-click advertising converts to a lead when a customer makes it to a dealership's website. So from a cost per lead standpoint, if the average dealership is paying $2 CPC, and let's say the lead uh, to conversion rate is 1%, then it would take 100 clicks to get to a lead or $200 cost per lead. But in reality, on average, the average customer will click on more 
than one search results ad, doubling or tripling this cost per lead to $400 to $600 per lead for pay-per-click advertising. Now here's where it gets really crazy. So if you're closing your first party leads at 10%, which I think is probably a pretty fair number, that means you're closing one out of 10. So this is what the math would look like. Each click costs you $2. You need 100 clicks, totaling $200. You need 10 leads to get a sale. That's $2,000 per car sold. Not taking into consideration that uh, the average customer clicks on at least two search results ads, making that $4,000 per car sold. That's what the math would be. And at $4,000 uh, cost per sale, I think everybody would agree that pay-per-click advertising does not work from an ROI perspective. Now, but the real problem with this is that this is what we, you would call last click attribution. <clears throat> Gary Vaynerchuk, the author of The Thank You Economy, calls this looking at the width of marketing, not looking at the depth. He is also the author of Jab, Jab, Right Hook, and if you're a marketing geek like me, I highly recommend both of those books. Most advertising vendors like to look at last click attribution because it's an easy way to justify ROI. I'm sure you've all heard this a thousand times before. If you get just one sale from this, it pays for itself. <clears throat> when I was running a dealership and managing the advertising budget, I heard this every single day from one vendor or another. And I think it's time that we stop looking at attribution and we start looking at contribution. Or as Gary Vee would say, looking at the qual, not the quant. As dealers, everything you do from an advertising and marketing perspective contributes to the whole and becomes your marketing stack. Everything works in conjunction. Now, I can tell you from my own personal experience from selling over 1,500 vehicles face-to-face, -face, one deal at a time over my career, that when a customer walked on the lot that when I was selling a car, that it wasn't Google or autotrader.com that was selling that car. It was me. I was the attribution, right? Now, in fairness, maybe it was cars.com or AdWords or the website that helped the customer get to the lot to become showroom traffic but it was me that actually sold the car. So everything really contributed to the sale, not just one thing. It's not sales attribution, it's contribution. <clears throat> As I was preparing uh, for, one of my, for, for this talk, one of my guys, Alex, did some research on frequency to help illustrate the point that everything is contributive. In, um, in advertising, frequency is the number of times a person is exposed to an advertising message. This was written by Thomas Smith in a guide called Successful Advertising from 1885. The first time people look at a given ad, they don't even see it. The second time, they don't notice it. The third time, they are aware that it is there. The fourth time, they have a fleeting sense that they've seen it somewhere before. The fifth time, they actually read the ad. The sixth time, they thumb their nose at it. The seventh time, they start to get a little irritated with it. The eighth time, they start to think, here's that confounded ad again. The ninth time, they start to wonder if they're missing out on something. The tenth time, they ask their friends and neighbors if they've tried it. The eleventh time, they wonder how the company is paying for all of these ads. The twelfth time, they start to think it must be a good product. The thirteenth time, they start to feel the product has value. The fourteenth time, they start to remember wanting a product exactly like this for a long time. The fifteenth time, they start to yearn for it because they can't afford it. The sixteenth time, they accept the fact that they will buy it sometime in the future. The seventeenth time, they make a note to, uh, to buy the product. The eighteenth time, they curse their poverty for not allowing them to buy this terrific product. The nineteenth time, they count their money very carefully. 
the 20th time the prospect sees the ad, they buy the ad that is being offered. The value of frequency is where Zmot got it right. The research shows that the average number of sources used by a typical automotive shopper was 18.2. And 97% of shoppers are influenced by digital. So how can you uh, start to use all this information to help you find the right marketing mix to help you sell more cars? Here are six steps that you can take to integrate these ideas into your marketing strategy. Number one, create a brand. What's your brand story? What makes you the clear choice for your customers? Do you have a unique selling proposition like lifetime warranty or an advantage program that includes special benefits that a customer receives at no additional charge? The more you advertise a brand, the more impact it has in your market area. Number two, create monthly campaigns. Campaign advertising, by definition, appear in different media platforms across a specific time frame, meaning that it has a beginning and an end. Many dealers choose to piggyback OEM campaigns, and I think that's a great idea. If your OEM is spending millions of dollars in advertising a campaign, it surely would make sense to capitalize on this. So for example, if you're a Toyota dealership and it's Toyotathon, you should be saying that the Toyotathon is on at ABC Toyota. If there isn't an OEM campaign going on, fill it in with your own. For example, a vehicle upgrade event or a red tag special. Number three, create multiple calls to action. What motivates one person to engage with a message may not motivate others. Using multiple calls to action will motivate more customers to engage and convert. Use customer incentives, discounts, specials to create a compelling reason for engagement. Use one clear action in your advertising and online experience like get offer, register now to motivate your desired next step. Number four, create a cohesive online to offline experience. Integrate your brand, your monthly campaigns, and your calls to action into your sales process. Daily or weekly meetings to review current campaigns and calls to action so when a customer arrives at the dealership, there is a seamless transition into that showroom experience. Train salespeople on how to add value to the process by using your dealership's brand story into specific steps of your sales process, such as your greeting, product presentation, closing, and support that with integrated point of purchase display. Number five, coordinate between all marketing platforms and vendors. Create a Google Sheet with monthly campaign information and share that with all of your marketing partners and anybody that is working on your marketing team. This will allow you to seamlessly manage specials, incentives, lease payments, trade value enhancements to multiple vendors over multiple platforms quickly and easily. And you'll also be able to measure success holistically across your entire marketing stack. Number six. Diversify your marketing budget to align with your customer's path to purchase and create your own B2C marketing stack. As your digital marketing budget grows and takes more away from your traditional budget, I re recommend taking that money and investing that in areas that supports your customer's path to purchase. Not just increasing your spend with where you're already spending. Don't just increase PPC and increase automotive marketplaces, but look into emerging areas like custom audience targeting on Facebook or dark posts, IP targeting and cookie matching, as well as retargeting. There are so many new and effective ways to highly target and highly personalized advertising content available today. It really is an incredible time to be a marketer. Finally, Invest in ways to personalize the landing page experience by creating landing page content that is consistent with your brand story, your monthly campaigns, and your calls to action. And create multiple conversion pathways that will motivate more of your customers to convert 
when they engage. Because in the end, it's all about conversion. So thank you very much. I really appreciate everybody uh, coming and seeing my session this morning. We do have a little bit of time left, so if there are any questions you may have, I'd be happy to answer them.